Uh, so like all system design problems, um, if you saw the first past four weeks, um, we're effectively going to be going through the requirements that we want to clarify the requirements system design. Yeah. Hopefully you guys can solve this alongside me too. I think it'd be good to stretch your brain and uh, for just the systems I thought, I think it'll, it'll probably help assuming you're interviewing. And um, I'm just gonna be going over my notes, I think from like Alex Shu's book. So um, that's where kind of all this information comes from. And um, yeah, yeah, let's get into it. Let's get active. Cool, so we're gonna clarify the requirements. And for this one, right, like the point of clarifying the requirements is that Google Maps is a massive service. There are tons and tons of things that's involved. And so we need to narrow down what the interviewer actually wants. Um, it really depends on your interviewer. So it's always good to ask tons of questions and it also flexes like additional knowledge. Uh, interviewers really like it when you can really, when you sound like you really know the application. I don't really know why. I think it's, I guess you can consider lots of possibilities and they really like to see that. So uh, for Google Maps, we obviously like Google Maps is a platform. You've probably used it a lot. Um, you can click a location on your phone, start and end destination. It will tell you uh, where that is. Um, and they also show you a map. So like one question you would ask is like, okay, do we want to handle displaying the map? Um, and so like we, you know, we actually want to display the map for sure. Display map to the user. And we want to focus on like basically we want to give user navigation to like a start and end destination. Uh, we also want to track their location. So as they're moving, we want to like be updating it so that we can uh, pivot and like see them through, provide user, give user, user EPA. Um, and then we want to yeah, display them out. So uh, these are going to be the things, other things too, that are just like additional kind of stuff. I think that like bonus is that like, um, or given access of all road data in the world so we don't have to like kind of come up with a solution for that must take in traffic conditions um support different travel modes biking walking car etc and um don't need to worry about adding photos or reviews normally you can add photos of businesses and locations and also reviews but we're not going to be worrying about that so it'll just be these four things Display the map to the user, give them navigation from start to end, track their location, and also give them an ETA. And then also um, we're going to take into account of traffic and also do travel modes. And with that here, uh, second thing we want to do is back of envelope estimations. Actually, we want to do uh, non-functional, actually, non-functional requirements. So I think we want the, let's see here, um, highly scalable, like let's say 1 billion users day. I want to say people use it a lot, right? Yeah, 1 billion people using it a day. So we want a highly scalable application. Um, we want this to be active, um, should never go down, right? So available. It, I don't think consistency really matters for this um, a whole lot. I'm not sure if there's any other real things. And yeah, I think we just want to minimize, like, so like don't drain users battery a lot and uh, don't give wrong directions. So that would be bad. Cool. So we have non-functional requirements here. Beautiful. Let's go into the next one, which is the back of envelope estimations. And we're going to be doing this off of 1 billion daily active users. And then that'll be uh, how many queries? So we're going to have people probably using it. Maybe let's say there and back. So they go to a place and they come back eventually. So maybe like we could even say maybe four times a day they want directions or something. And so then that means that we've got uh, four, ten, four times in. We can convert this um, to do the quick math in a, you know, without a calculator. We can convert this into uh, powers of ten. So billion is ten to the ninth. Uh, third is thousand. Six is million. Nine is billion. So uh, we'll do that for the ninth, and then we can turn it into seconds per day to get the transactions per second onto a load into our database. And uh, I believe these are also going to be right too. Like right because we're going to be pulling in a map and then we're going to be like getting in the location and also storing the user location and things. I don't know, actually, I'm not sure. Anyways, we'll divide by 10 to the fifth. That's seconds in a day. So we'll have 10 times 10 to the fourth uh, queries per second onto this. And then the interesting thing here too is we're also going to be sending out um, pulses for the user's location. And that's probably going to be happening like every couple of seconds, honestly. So then we could multiply this by 60 for location patient right uh we're going to be doing like uh, 10 to the fourth times 60 so we can make it 10 to the fifth and uh i don't know like 34 times 10 to the fifth. I, don't, I don't know six times four whatever uh, six times four i think is 24 uh, whatever so it'd be like 2.4 times 10 to the sixth i think this is right um so we're gonna be doing location rights and then we're just gonna be general queries 
things like that. Cool, great, we got it locked in. And now that we have the QPS for both of these, we can actually talk about the entities that we're gonna be using for our database. And so that's gonna look something like, uh, we want a user location, um, user profile, maybe, not super important though. And then maybe like their navigation. So we're gonna want to store like maybe like a trip is what we can call it. Uh, user location and then like their trip to be their start and end. And then the route that they need to take, I believe. So this is where it gets a little bit murky for me. It's a little bit murky. And then for the API, API route, um, we want to calculate distance, calculate or navigate. I don't know. I don't even think we need calculate distance. We just really need to navigate. And then it'll be uh, passing in like a start date or start. And the interesting thing is that like, we're gonna have like what start location. Um, is like, well, how are we gonna have the start location? I think latitude, longitude makes the most sense, but we're gonna have like a start location and then the end location. The problem is I don't even remember how you, is it like question mark equals or something? Something like that. Start location equals and then end location. Um, I think it's just a get request actually. I'm not sure if we need really a whole lot else. Um, and then also the mode of transportation. So we have all these things here all bundled up for design Google Maps. And so now what we're gonna do is go ahead and draw up the high level design of this. So what we'll do here is um, have like a user who wants to like, who's on like their mobile phone or something. And then they say that they want to uh, navigate. So then we'll have like a navigation service here. I'll have a navigation service. Um, we will have that send it into like some machine learning algorithm, graphic algorithm, or graphic ML, ML service. And it will uh, get the location via like a machine learning We'll also have a database here and um, also have the system design thing for it's like load balancer, literally just like a load balancer here. And so this can be a uh, zookeeper uh, or EPCD, we'll have something like that. Uh, navigation service so that once the, we have all these users, it'll get flooded into the proper service. So we're actually have, we're stacking multiple of these. Scale is really important here. So we're gonna stack multiple uh, of these services and then when it passes through, we can record the user's location and actually start creating trips. So we can have the trip, we can store the user's location. So that'll look something like, um, like where their latitude, uh, maybe like their latitude, the current latitude, current longitude is where we could store it, I think. And then we can say like their start, lat, uh, start lat, start long. And because the scale is so high here and we don't really need consistency, I'm totally okay using a, um, a NoSQL database here. Um, so something like DynamoDB. Um, now the question is, is it heavy write or heavy reads kind of application? I think that's a big question to have because that can also affect the database um, decision. So we could use Cassandra if it's write heavy or DynamoDB if it's read heavy. And in this case, I'm seeing, let's say I think I'm seeing that we're really just, we're sending out a lot of location writes. So we're changing the location a lot, um, which makes me want to use Cassandra. Now that said, we're also we're also doing map. And so I think there's actually for locations, I think it actually kind of falls apart where we want to, to convert differently. Actually, we want to convert differently um, when there are some kind of map service. We could have the trips uh, latitude and longitude, um, and then we have the end lat and then the end longitude. And with this, we can keep track of where the location are, where they need to go, and we can start grabbing this so the navigation service can say, hey, I'm gonna send this to the user. Well, let's go into the ML service, get the route, and then send it back and send it back to the user. So at a high level, this is like what it's gonna look like. And then we're gonna start deep diving through into the actual algorithms and like how this stuff works. But like effectively, we're gonna have some kind of navigation. It's gonna be grabbing in, taking in the user's info, storing it into like a trip. We can have a trip ID. Yeah, we'll, we'll start going into a deep dive of like kind of like all this stuff and like, because it actually is more complicated than this. So uh, one thing we did not do here, it's actually, I like to keep the, the requirements right next to it, is um, we need to display the map to the user. So there's nothing here that actually does that. And this is where in the system design interview where this is actually a bad design because it doesn't answer the question. And so uh, this would be failing. Now, um, of course, like, again, I, this is why I like, I like to look back at it. And I probably in the future, I would always like just keep it next to me so I can always have it visible. So it doesn't like fill up and disappear. Um, but okay, we want to display the map to the user. So like, how are we going to display the map? How do we have it to where a user can like go on their phone and like see the map and everything like that? And um, one, I think it's an image and, but it's actually several layers of images. 
that depend on each zoom that you do. So like the Google Maps looks different if you zoom all the way out. And when you zoom all the way in, it literally like has like your street name and everything like that. And so we want to actually have like a, just a really big map or like all the different light, all the different zoom levels. So not just one map that they can scroll around, just like an image that they can drag and scroll around, but we want to have it at um, all of the zoom levels. So we'll have level one, level two, level three, level four, level five, six, so on, um, seven, and so on. Um, and we can store that map into a CDN, some kind of like some kind of like object storage. Um, CDNs are great for images too because they they have like higher load speeds. I think they cache them too based off the user's location, which is really nice. And so now when a user opens their phone, we ping that CDN. This is why if you've ever gone to an airplane, um, if you're flying in the air, you actually can't see your map at all. It takes a while to like load and stuff like that. But I, I don't actually know how that works. I mean, they have to actually have the copy on your phone. I think they actually have the copy of the images on your phone for every zoom level, which you could do here too. Um, but we could ping the CDN to download the, the layers, the copies of it, and then we can store it on the user's phone. If we're okay taking up data, that's like something that's okay. So effectively we have like different tiles for each of like the images. So like an image has like a different, you know, kind of set tile that it can, which I think the tiles are, um, it's like what you see and you can like put kind of images within them. Kind of like, I guess, grids, faces on a grid. So then when you're in zoom one, you've got like four different tiles that you can see and then so on and so on. And it gets to just really, really big that you could like scan through and, and scroll through. Cool, so that's how we handle like displaying the map to the user. And then um, we have also talked about like giving start and end um, a little bit. Now the question here is though, is that like the start of this, we mentioned that like we're given just only the roads. So we're not given, like we have to do some kind of conversion one. So there is a, a translation that needs to happen here. And we could do this within the navigation service, I think, but we want to do something and it's called geo voting. And so this takes something like um, 211 Aurora Lane, uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico. This takes um, Aurora Lane, Albuquerque, New Mexico, and it converts it into like latitude 213210 longitude, whatever, which is really good. So this is like the first thing that we will 100% need to do given some kind of road. Um, usually users do not input their latitude and longitude. Usually they enter in their address with the city, uh, with the zip code. And we can use geocoding geo to uh, convert these. And so I think this is just like a, just like a hash map. That's how that would work. We have a list of all the, all the addresses, all the things, and we map them into like using a hash map. Then we can very quickly do that. And we can just handle that inside of this service. So that's part one. Uh, part two is how do we efficiently trace through all of the possible routes and how do we get like the fastest route to the person um, given like just a massive, massive road system. So this is where we get into possible uh, methods. So one way that we can handle this data of like all of these roads that are spanning out and out and out, and we're trying to like figure out what's the fastest route, I think, is it, is it, has that from the fastest route or is it something else? Is it? No. For fastest route, we just use Dijkstra's or we use A star as an algorithm. Doesn't matter. That's how we get the fastest route from from A to B. But I also mentioned, um, I forgot to mention that we're when we're mapping 3D to 2D, we're losing um, actually the hills, but that's perfectly fine. So we're mapping a 3D dimensional thing, right? We're taking it away. We're taking away elevation, but that's fine for this. Um, that's how Google Maps works. And then for, oh, there is another algorithm, which I was gonna talk about. I actually don't understand fully why we're using it, but um, instead of using like, in addition to using latitude and longitude, which is very important, it can help us with searching if we use a better data structure or traversal. So we can convert to like some kind of graph structure or something like that. And we can actually use geohashing. So we can have, we can split the world into like four different coordinates, zero, one, I don't know, like zero, zero, like one, one, whatever. Uh, it doesn't matter, but like four coordinates. And so if you're on like America side, let's say like it's America's here, Europe is here, like Asia, or I guess Africa's here. Um, we can have like zoom levels. So then we can like zoom inside on America and then we can hit another zoom. And like, we basically split, you know, this is California in America, right? But like we can write down the code as like zero, 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 like one, uh, four, whatever. And the, what this does, is this allows us to very quickly, like see where we at and how far we need to go in order to get to some place. Like we know, okay, yes, this is the America kind of key. We know this one is like this and we end up just slicing through everything like very, very quickly. Um, and this is, we store all this data very easily in like a string. And so you can get very, very precise doing this because you just zoom in, you split four parts every single time you go into, go inside deeper split four again, um, go inside deeper. And you just kind of keep doing that and doing that. And then you have a, that as a as a numerical value. And so that's one way and that allows for like just efficient ways. So if we have two locations, we can actually just drill down both and see if we find them. Uh, the other way too, is that we can actually use quad trees. So you can have one is our origin and we can just branch everything out four times and we step inside 
And then we have like all of the addresses that are here and we can just search, hey, is our address in here? Oh, it is? Okay, cool, we, we found it. And then we can keep doing our, our branching until we find the next one. So uh, that is how like that's handled and mapped. And again, these are really useful algorithms. Um, I was given like a mapping algorithm in, a, uh, in an interview and um, I was able to solve it because maybe not like entirely, but because I know like the algorithm stuff. So um, this is called, these are called geocaching and then quad trees, which are two ways that we can represent the data into this navigation service, which will help us. Okay, um, so we have the map of the world. Um, I never talked about how many petabytes of data that is. Um, 80 to 90% of the world of the earth is just ocean. So we can actually clean up a lot of the data. Um, location updates are brutal. We don't have to send out location updates every second. We could just send it every 15 seconds. We can fetch map tiles using the geo hash, find it. So again, the kind of like narrowing down the zero, one, two, three, four. We can use CDNs and we could store all of the road information again in kind of these two formats if we want. And then a machine learning algorithm, of course. And um, it actually sends it using Kafka. So they send it, they use Kafka here to guarantee that nothing drops because we don't really care about the consistency. So I kind of missed that, but I think this is fine. I think it's okay. Did we answer all the questions here? We have the ETAs because of the machine learning algorithm. Um, we are tracking the location. We are constantly having them send it out back to us. And then we're feeding them back the data. We're giving access to all the maps of the world. So we are talking about how we're gonna build it all based off that. And so we can even have this here as like the world map or something that can pipe in. And I think this is good. This is good, I think this is good. It took like 25 minutes, so um, I think I think it's fine. Like I think we covered mostly everything, and then I think an interviewer would probably have more deep dive questions for me, like how does this work? How does this work? But I think I would be able to answer those. So um, I think this is solid for what you would need to know. I think like the big thing for these navigation problems is like, do you know what geohashing is, and can you explain that? And then uh, geohashing and also geocoding. I feel like those are really important. So this is a pretty easy-ish problem. Um, also curious too on like what does Hello Interview think? So maybe I'll look that up. Actually, let's look it up. Let's look up Hello Interview. They should have this problem really in their thing. They should have it. Google Docs, Brava, Uber, which looks like this. API gateway, load balancer for routing, third party mapping service, ride service, DB. Oh, they like the microservices. Cool, and then they pass in like the attributes. Yeah, cool. All right, uh, I, I think that's it. That's all I got. So uh, we'll end it there for this design Google Maps. And um, hopefully you learned something from this. And uh, yeah, I think these are important for location. There's sometimes you'll get asked things for like location apps and it's worth knowing how, how is location handled for those kind of applications. So um, yeah, hopefully this was helpful and I'll see you guys next week in another system design video.